same time. Well, that could be, but I'll tell you what happened uh, two days after 9-11 is the Bush family went out and collected all the bin Laden relatives that were here in right. the country and escorted them out of the country, even though there was a no-fly order throughout the country. Right. I remember that. Yeah, you are right about that, Richard. I, that was big back then. I remember that being in the news. But, um, yeah. You know what's, what's it was really amazing... amazing. I'm sorry, but Go ahead. I had to get this out before I forget. Uh, 9-11 is still going on today. As a matter of fact, they just had uh, a truth convention out here in Pennsylvania two weeks ago. And the number of architects and scientists that are saying there's so many irregularities concerning the collapse of those buildings is numbering in the 1,200 now. Yeah, I believe it. You know, w once the cat is out of the bag, you just can't stop it. And uh, this goes back to the one of the reasons they want to shut down the Internet with any means possible. Because uh, they can't allow people like us here to exchange information freely and express our viewpoints. Uh, if, if this crime network that is running uh, the United States, Europe, and other places in the world... If they, uh, if their media empire falls and their brainwashing machine falls, uh, they're not going to be able to hold on to power for much longer. And I think that's, you know, you already see newspapers and mass media are dying because of alternative media with the internet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I gotta, I gotta say here that that uh, the most efficient uh, and purposeful. Uh, organizations of any government is always the military and if you see the military being dismantled in this country or any other country it's an indication that somebody is worried about these people and uh, if there's any if there's any resistance to the international bankers or international criminal organization it's going to be the military and, um, and to be honest with you I'm, I'm reading a book now about a uh, uh, a, a plot to kill Hitler in 1938 before Hitler went to war and I'm thinking oh my god <laughs> you know uh, uh, this ties right into what's going on today uh, you know who are these people and they were uh, uh, Gestapo, they were SS they were uh, the Air Force, uh, the Navy I mean these people were really involved with the government, but they were plotting against Hitler in 1938, two years before he went to war, or one year before he went to war. So, the, you know, if if that can happen in Germany at that period of time, it can happen here now. Right, yep. Yeah. You know, I would hope that uh, the military would get involved at some point, but uh, I just think uh, those retired military, uh, they're... Uh, they're pretty content to receive their pension and live the high life. Uh, they don't want to lose what they have going for them. And uh, if the military were to do anything, it'll only be after uh, you know our economy c collapses to the point where you know pensions and and uh, you know the money benefit from it is not going to be there anymore. That when um, people lose everything they have, then you'll finally see something happen. But uh, I think by that time it'll be too late because, like we've touched upon already, uh, they'll use some provocation event. They'll either allow it or stage it, doesn't matter which, um, to get what they want with this war started. And, and by then it'll be too late. And, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of Iraq war vets out, of the, out there that uh, know what they did was uh, for lies and... Uh, you know, I just hope they, they come to figure out that uh, they, they look into a little more, because those are the only people. The military is the only group of people that are going to do anything in this country. The average person is going to sit back on the sidelines and, and try to help their family and, and, and survive. No, nah, um, they're going to be watching uh, Dancing with the Stars and <laughs> American Yeah, there you Idol. go. No, I see well, corrected. <clears throat> you know, guys, uh, my my thought process is is that Humans are a lot like rats. You know, they'll they'll take a lot of abuse until you get them in the corner. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've cornered a rat, so I know what happens after that. And that thing leaped at least eight feet and hey. headed right for my throat. 
I used so, to be a rat. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Well, you must have taken a vaccine to cure that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, as many people that have hung managed to hang on to their guns, I think it's it's going to come out to be one hell of a bloody big-time revolution. Not just the military turning, but the people. It's going to be the military against the people at first, but then they're going to join forces. Well, you know, I got to I got to tell you, it, it, I'm former military, not career military. I only spent a couple of years there, but I know how efficient these people can be. And if if they're going to plan something like a rebellion or a coup or whatever, they're going to list their allies that they can trust 100% and everybody else will be questionable. If there's any any doubt that they will stand to one side and and be quiet or uh, and and they will make active moves to defeat a, a coup they will be eliminated period yeah well you see I see the top level um, trying to implement something like that but if when the military ends up joining the people it's going to be the lower ranks mm-hmm. and you know it's it's inevitable I mean because let's face it they they got the military to fire on civilians um, back during that that college uh, Kent State Kent State yeah so that was the one time in the history of this country and people were devastated over that I don't think that they're really going to allow that to to continue you know it's going to be another case of the shot heard around the world because in essence this is not our government and people have to wake up to that fact this is a foreign government that runs this country alright that's a good stopping point for us right there we'll be right back we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more live on the cutting edge every Saturday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time them say insurance companies have a near monopoly and they are using it to gouge customers but John Stossel took a look into it and found that's not necessarily the case so many of these markets are so concentrated it's not like you can go shopping you're stuck the concentration has gotten even more serious my home state of Alabama Blue Cross Blue Shield has roughly 89 percent of the private health insurance market okay the president called that one and raised it. In Alabama, almost 90% is controlled by just one company. Blue Cross is the company, and this does look like a near monopoly, but the 89% claim is wrong. Blue Cross itself says the correct number is 75%, and that's only if you leave out employers that act as their own insurers. Add those companies in, and the Alabama market looks like this. Blue Cross does have a third of the business. But it's hardly a monopoly. But the monopoly myth is everywhere. There's only two or one insurance companies allowed to sell in most states. But in every state, there's some competition. If one says we're not going to pay people, they'll but lose here's, their business. Here's what happens, So It's like the oil cabal. Come on, there's no oil cabal or insurance cabal. Heck, if you go online to eHealth Insurance, you see that there are 72 non-Blue Cross health insurance plans offered just in Alabama. But O'Reilly is right in that we'd have even more choices if we were allowed to buy insurance from another state. My state, New York, forces me to pay more for my health insurance because my state's legislators have insisted that every policy must cover chiropractic care, fertility treatments, alcohol rehab, things that I don't want, but too bad, I have to pay for them. But I don't hear the president celebrating the improved competition we'd get by allowing people to buy from out of state. Instead, I hear market bashing. Somehow, market forces will make things better. Well, we, we, we've tried that. No, we haven't. It's time we did try it. But Obamacare goes in the other direction, to government price controls on insurance companies. They will no longer be able to arbitrarily and massively hike your premiums. But we've tried price controls before. I am today ordering a freeze on all prices and wages throughout the United States.